Now, next, the loyalist Jimmy Bryson gets a personal meeting with Sir Geoffrey Donaldson uh, yesterday. Then he gets an hour with the former Foreign Secretary, Priti Patel, and asked to speak at the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee. Tonight, why does this unelected man have so much access? And how worried should we be about threats from loyalist paramilitaries over the Irish Sea border? Do you feel that the ongoing presence of uh, the Irish Sea border uh, does allow for recruitment of paramilitarism? Do you think you know, that's uh, having an impact on, on recruitment um, and, or a potential recruitment, uh, given just the unrest that it's causing within uh, Northern Ireland? And does it make transition more difficult? Um, well, in short answer, yes and yes, uh, and, and to fly, flesh that out a bit, um, I mean, senior senior leaders in the paramilitary organisations uh, told me, and I know this from living in loyalist communities, uh, that young lads were beating their doors down, wanting to join the organisations uh, to fight against the Irish Sea border. And, and those organisations, to their credit, the leaderships of those organisations did not go on a recruitment drive, uh, and they, they put those young lads down the, the, the pathway of uh, peaceful protest, politics, uh, and discourage violence. So I think it's important to put that on the record. So, J J Jimmy Bryson, what, what, what is this threat from loyalist paramilitaries? Well, as I expressly said yesterday, I don't want to whip up any particular threat from anybody. Um, I was answering questions. Except you said it. Well, no, uh, if, uh, I would encourage people to listen to the whole two hours of the, the, the discussion because much of it was about education and, and actually I was asked questions and, and I expressly said I do not want to whip up tensions, I don't want to be accused of whipping up tensions and I simply answered the question honestly and that in a, in a political context uh, whereby uh, unionism and loyalism feels as it does um, that it, it, it's important that we arrive at a political solution uh, to this, what that political solution and if we needs don't? to be. Well, then, then a vacuum is created, uh, and that's very dangerous in Northern Ireland, and that creates a problem, because all of the progress we've made in Northern Ireland, the, the, the Loyalist ceasefires of 1994, the Belfast Agreement, was within a political context uh, of an equilibrium where unionists and loyalists felt that they were treated equally to nationalists and republicans over the last 25 years. We know all years. this. That hasn't happened. Was the, so, was the, so, was so, the so, inference so. from you yesterday... <clears throat> that loyalists may take up guns if they don't get what I, they want. I, I, I don't detect any intent uh, from anybody in loyalism nor desire to engage in any type of conflict. Uh, and, I, and again, I don't speak for these organisations, they speak for themselves, but in my analysis, I think uh, the leaderships of the organisations have actually worked hard to ensure and to keep a lid on things, and I think they, they do deserve credit for that because uh, they, could have, they could have whipped things up, they could have engaged in mass street violence, they didn't do that, so I am not saying that there's anybody uh, in loyalist organisations who wants to return to violence. Well, you've said they've stopped quite, transitioning. Quite, what does that mean? Well, I think there's... The, the only thing the protocol and, and the Winds of Framework has delivered has been a transition break because um, in these loyalist organisations, the critical mass of people uh, are, are, are politically motivated in that sense. And there's a lot of people who are pure criminals. That's a policing issue. There's a lot of people who are there for socioeconomic uh, reasons, lack of opportunities, etc. But the critical mass, let me, this is an important point, and the leaderships are politically motivated. So in circumstances whereby there's progress in Northern Ireland, where there's progress towards civilianisation, where I believe the organisations uh, emphatically and definitely want to go, there has to be the correct political context in order to facilitate that, pro to facilitate that progress. And for so long as unionists and loyalists are subjugated and treated as second-class citizens, and, and the understandings and safeguards and promises that were given to unionists and loyalists in 1994 and 1998 are cast aside, then there is a political context which is not conducive to further saying, progress. But if you're saying they're stopping transitioning, right, the, the transition is from terrorist to law-abiding person. The transition is from paramilitary who breaks the law to law-abiding citizen. <laughs> so if they're stopping transitioning, they're remaining as terrorists, aren't they? Well, well, the, the issue is the issue is this: uh, in terms of the the civilianisation transition piece, and I'd encourage a lot of people in the media to actually go and read the IRC's reports on a lot of this because it confound. And the IRC, Monica McWilliams, Tim O'Connor, Mitchell Lees, and John McBurney, nobody could accuse them of being soft on paramilitaries. They are very experienced peacemakers, credible people. Read their analysis of all of this, which confounds much of the media's. So uh, the situation is this: 
uh, transition and civilianization of loyalist organizations uh, has outstanding issues. I would, I don't know, I presume there may be extant weapons. Uh, there's still structural issues. And in order for that to progress and be dealt with, there has to be a political context where the leaderships of those organizations can say to their membership, the promises that were made in 1998 uh, the guard, constitutional safeguards, a union being safe, um, that has been restored. And, and, and that is not the context that we're presently in. S S Suzanne Breen, who is this guy? How does he get so much access to Sir Geoffrey Donaldson? We see him with Priti Patel, a former for, uh, foreign secretary, yesterday. He's not elected. Who is he? Well, I think a lot of people outside the Loyalist community are actually asking that and they see the political journey that Jamie Bryson has made from being a Loyalist Flags protester leader, from more recently standing on top of a blue bin denouncing the protocol. They see it an absolutely staggering political journey from there right into the heart of the British political establishment, effectively feted, you know, greeted, welcomed, a warm welcome by so many powerful people at Westminster. And I think people would be asking, would the Republican equivalent of Jamie Bryson and receive the same treatment. Now, I'm not talking about mainstream Republicans, about Sinn Féin people who, whether we like it or not, have political mandates and are elected, but say a non-mainstream anti-agreement Republican, maybe someone who stood for election, didn't get elected, who then caused mayhem on the streets in terms of um, flags. And, you know, would, would they be welcomed as warmly in Westminster or the Doyle? Would they have access to the corridors of power? I don't think that they would, and I think that does raise a lot of questions for people. How do you get this? Why, why is Pretty Patel meeting you? Where did that friendship start? <laughs> is it a friendship? Is it a uh, look, is look, it a political we, contact? We've, 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 How do you get to know look, Pretty Patel? Look, we've been down this path before. Uh, things uh, turns into a story. Uh, the BBC seemed to be more interested in my diary and, 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 and people I engage with than, than, than even I am. A former else. foreign secretary, come on, spit it out. Yeah, well, look, what, you, you know, what, they, what do they talk to you Pl about? Pliti Patel uh, is someone who is uh, committed to uh, undoing the damage caused by the Windsor framework, who is committed to the story Northern Ireland's place uh, within the Union, and I hope in, in years to come is somebody who uh, is certainly, a, I, I think, has the potential of being a, a, a Prime Minister or certainly a leader well, of the Conservative Party. why is she... Party. Serious question. What, what is she talking to you about? Well, but private, uh, private engagements, I'm not going to discuss that with you. And Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, an hour with him yesterday? Well, I don't, neither of us had a stopwatch out, um, but look, that's, that's a private engagement. We've been down this path. What's We've been down this path uh, many times. Does Sir Geoffrey I'm, I'm 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 ring I'm you up not, and say, here, I'm, I'm, know you're in I'm, Westminster, I'm, let's go for a I'm, pint? I'm not. Or, or, or <laughs> let's have a wee meet up? And, and what are you talking yeah, about, we, we, seriously? We certainly weren't out nightclubbing. Um, well, look, what were you I, doing? I, I, I'm not discussing private engagements. I've been down this path well, with you. Well, you're obviously talking I've, I've, politics. I, I've been down this path with you so many times and I'm not going down it again. My engagements with people are private and, and the obsession over this okay. uh, and over my relationship with Jeffrey right. has, worn, well, has give worn, us, worn thin. Well, give us your analysis then of where the DUP's at. Do, are, you, are you aware? I'm, I'm content at this point in time that I think the DUP are standing firm behind their seven key tests. Uh, and I don't think uh, what the government have been road testing thus far uh, is anywhere near sufficient to the store power sharing. And, and I'm uh, going by Geoffrey's speech on Saturday uh, and other things. I'm, I'm, I'm content. And other things. In I'm, other words, I'm, what he said I'm, to you I'm, yesterday I'm, I'm, in no, this hour long no, meeting. No, I didn't say again. Do you didn't, deny we, it? We didn't have a stopwatch out. You didn't um, ask him? So the, the issue, uh, it's a private conversation. Uh, what I'm saying is I certainly feel more content today than I did two weeks ago uh, in terms of the position of the DUP. Are, are you aware of senior members at the top of the DUP who, who, who might be pushing a narrative that the party's going back in soon? I would say there's senior unelected people in positions in the DUP who are desperate to get back to Stormont and uh, are, are trying to set that narrative and I don't think that narrative is consistent with uh, certainly where the bulk of the important people in the DUP Senior sit. unelected officials in the DUP with influence? Senior enough to have influence? Well, not uh, the, the same people who thought they had enough influence and told the government that the storm and break was sufficient and that they were going to, uh, that the, the winds of framework would be sufficient for the DUP. So obviously not that much influence. If Priti Patel, a former foreign secretary, 
is meeting up with you to talk about politics. Is the British government meeting up with you to talk about politics? I, I, I don't have any official contact with the British government. Suzanne, what is going on? Well, Jimmy said he didn't have any official contact with the British government. Note the word official. Um, I mean, sources say that he does have unofficial contact with the British government. So basically, you know, one minute on one day, Jimmy's captured on the street walking side by side with certain paramilitary leaders. And the next, he is in the corridors of power in Westminster and meeting a former Home Secretary. That's what's going on. So spit it out. What, what does that mean in summary? Well, I think it, it, it clearly... Is he more influential than some elected representatives? I think he does have influence and he clearly still has influence on the DUP and the party is very keen to keep him on board. Um, he wrote a letter to Sir Geoffrey Donaldson a few weeks ago. Geoffrey Donaldson didn't seem to like that. He hit back. I wrote in the Belfast Telegraph that the bromance seemed to be off. But if you watched proceedings yesterday in the House of Commons and the whole re warmth of relationship between Jim Shannon and particularly between Carla Lockhart and Jamie Bryson, I mean, they were on first name terms. It was very very, very friendly. But the reality will be that it's sooner or later there will be a fork in the road between Jamie Bryson and the DUP leadership, those who want to go back to Stormont. And it is not beyond um, the realms of possibility that Jamie Bryson, if, if Carla Lockhart endorsed a deal, that Jamie Bryson would be outside her constituency offices and upper band protesting and Jamie's mates could be saying all sorts. What's up there? Um, I'm... I'm very confident uh, in Carla uh, and that she will stand firm to the DUP's seven key tests uh, and I don't see any circumstance in which Carla um, or indeed anybody in the, uh, elected in the DUP would um, forego yeah. those. I mean, look, how could the, uh, how could the, you know, this is all this talk about, you know, the DUP is going to go back, they're preparing the ground and uh, that's wishful thinking because, I mean, what are they going to do? Are they going to abandon the seven key tests? Are they going to collaborate in implementing the subjugation of the union? I mean, it, it would be a fundamental you know, betrayal. I can't see them doing it. And as I say, I'm, I'm very Do so you think there I'm, were some very senior people I'm, within the DUP contemplate abandoning some of the seven tests in recent weeks? Well, look, you're well informed in the media. I think you'd probably be best to talk to people in the media who are getting briefed by these individuals. They're not briefing me, but... Um, what do you mean? Well, I, I mean, look, it's... Who's I mean, briefing who? I mean, well, look, it's, it's, it's an open secret that there's certain people in the DUP briefing that, that uh, uh, a different line than, than is being put out publicly and is probably accurate, uh, probably... For briefing the, what line? Briefing that the, 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 the ground is being prepared for the DUP to go back, and I don't think that that's consistent. So I don't think that's hold accurate. Hold on a minute. You're... Pretty close, as Suzanne's saying, to senior people in the DUP. You're saying that you are aware of senior people in the DUP briefing that the party was readying itself to go back in. Is that what you've just that's said? That's my understanding, but I don't think that's reflective of the DUP's uh, position. But, I mean, there, there's Suzanne. She's a political journalist. No, I, I ask Suzanne. Well, I, you know, regardless of whether Jamie and Geoffrey Donaldson had an hour-long meeting at Westminster yesterday, I think Geoffrey Donaldson's vision of the future um, for Northern Ireland of Stormont is very, very different from Jamie Bryson's. Um, Geoffrey Donaldson, I think, will want to get as much as he can from the government, but I think he is by nature somebody who compromises, and I think he'll certainly be prepared to make compromises that Jamie wouldn't be prepared, and that will be when the fun begins. The Windsor Free framework is not being renegotiated fundamentally, is it? Well, a senior DUP source at the weekend told me um, at, at the DUP conference said that they had made very big asks of Brussels and London in terms of changing certain elements of the Windsor framework. Now, the rest of us don't think that that is possible. I think only time will tell, but it, it, it does seem to be a big stretch of the imagination to think that it, it, well, there will be any fundamental changes. Certainly, I can't envisage changes that would um, placate the likes of Jimmy Bryson and the people he represents. And do you think there's an internal battle going on within the DUP? Look, I, I'm not in the DUP. Um, I, I, I'm, you I'm, spent an hour yesterday I'm, with I'm, a leader. Uh, again, I didn't have a stopwatch out. I'm not in the DUP. Uh, I'm not getting into some internal soap opera. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the people I engage with in the DUP, I, 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 okay. I think they're standing firm behind their seven key tests and I support them in doing that. OK. Jimmy, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Suzanne, thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you very much. Now... Um, just before we go tonight, um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm losing a very close friend from the programme tonight. David Thompson is the assistant editor um, of The Nolan Show.